Hey, what's up, Spencer? My name is everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in May, and I read a lot of them. I read 13 books, so let's jump right in. We're going to be starting off with Jeremy Thatcher, Dragon Hatcher by Bruce Covell, and I give this book four stars. Jeremy Thatcher is a regular sixth grader who ducks into a magic shop one day and ends up buying a dragon egg for just a quarter. The dream. And then proceeds to go on a bunch of wacky adventures as he continues to raise this dragon until it is old enough to go off into the wild and live on its own. This book is super cute and I really enjoyed it. I remember reading it as a kid, but the only reason why I couldn't give it a full five stars is because there is no conflict to this story. There is minute little quirks going on in which like, you know, oh no, the dragon like set the bed sheets on fire. How am I going to cover that up from my parents type thing? But there is no like, overarching conflict. There is no evil. It is just very straightforward. Jeremy is raising his dragon, and then when it's old enough, he lets it go off into the wild, and it's sad, and he'll remember this forever. <laughs> the end. So while it was cute, just a four star. Next up, I have Monkey Bridge by Lan Cow, and I gave this book one star. This book follows our main character, who is a 17-year-old girl who she and her mother have been living in America for a few years after the Vietnam War. And this book covers a lot of stories from when the girl was living during the Vietnam War with her parents in Vietnam versus what it is like living in America post-Vietnam War. And while all of this was very interesting, it was not composed together in a way that was very succinct or made sense. Most of the time I was saying, why am I reading this story? How is this relevant to the plot in general? And most of the time the answer was it wasn't, and it didn't really contribute much. The plot was lacking, the main character gave up on it very quickly, and then was picked up again in the last like 30 pages and really crammed in there in a way that felt like so weird and just didn't work. This was such a disappointment for me because I really would love to learn more about the Vietnam War and what it is like being there from a Vietnamese point of view, but everything was so all over the place. It was confusing for me to even try and piece things together. A lot of the times I was just just trying to figure out how old the main character was. I shouldn't be spending the entire book trying to figure out how old the main character is throughout. Thus, not very good, just a one star. Next up, I have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan, and I gave this book four and a half stars. This book follows Zing Yin, who has to escape from her home on the moon after it is discovered that she is living there. Her mother is a prisoner on the moon, and it was unknown that she was pregnant when she first started her imprisonment. So now that people have discovered Zing Yin's existence, she has to escape into the spiritual realm and try and learn magic and gain enough favor with others to try and help her mother escape from her imprisonment on the moon. This book was so good and I enjoyed it so much. The fantasy and Chinese mythology was so interesting. And I was really compelled by a lot of these characters. I'm somebody who usually doesn't really like love triangles, but the author wrote the love triangle in the story in such a way that I actually was really going for it and really liking it and kind of hoping that it would turn into a true love triangle where all three of them were romantically together. And I have a special place in my heart for Prince Li Wei. He is a special little boy to me and I am very excited to read the second book in this duology. Next up, I read A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab, which is the second and third book in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. And between these two, I'm going to be giving them five stars. In case you're not familiar with the Darker Shade of Magic series, it is a fantasy series about a boy named Kel, who is an Antari. He is a special magician who has the ability to jump between like these different dimensions, these different worlds, these different lives. Londons, all of which have different levels of magic. There is a reason why these Londons don't really interact with each other and why the Antari are the only people who are supposed to go between the Londons and one day when some dark magic accidentally gets into Kel's London, some stuff kind of really goes down, some really crazy stuff 
three books worth of crazy stuff, it potentially more books worth of crazy stuff. Because a big reason why I read these is because V.E. Schwab is coming out with a series with all of the characters from this series. It is called The Fragile Threads of Power, I believe. And that book is supposed to be coming out in September, so I decided now would be a great time to reread the trilogy in preparation for September. Next up we have The Monsters of Morley Manor by Bruce Coville and I gave this book five stars. This was a childhood favorite of mine to the point that I obviously don't even have the dust jacket anymore and this is about Andy and his sister Sarah who go to an estate sale and buy a box filled with these little figurines that end up coming to life later on and the figurine monsters end up taking them on some interdimensional like space travels and this book is very wrinkle in time-esque in the fact that there is time travel and space travel and questions of like gender and like what do things mean and just like so much stuff that I am so mad that this is a standalone book and not a series because Bruce Coville could very easily expand this into a series and I am personally offended that he has not. Our next book is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley, and I give this book four and a half stars. This is a dual POV between a witch named Tamsin who is cursed with the ability or the inability to love, and thus she kind of performs spells and does things in exchange for other people's love. She meets a girl named Ren whose father is very sick because there is a plague sweeping through the queendom, and so Ren has has decided to give up her love for her father to Tamsin in order to save her father's life and now Tamsin and Ren are going on this adventure to try and figure out where this plague is coming from to get rid of it. This book is super cute, super queer. If you're somebody who loves the grumpy sunshine enemies to lovers, well I don't know if it's completely enemies to lovers because Tamsin isn't technically the enemy, but they're not really on the same side either. If you like it where like somebody is kind of like mean to the other person at the beginning of the relationship, but then they kind of like grow and learn to love each other and stuff like that, this is the book for you. It's super cute to the point that I put a couple of other things that Adrian Tooley has written on my TBR because I liked their writing in this story so much. Next up I have Hatched by Bruce Covell and I gave this book two stars. This follows Gerald the Griffin who doesn't believe that he is a very good griffin and so he decides to escape into the human realm in order to try and like gain some fame or try and run away or I'm not a hundred percent sure what the goal was because there didn't fully seem to be one. <laughs> This book was very slow and very little happened in it. And what did happen was crammed in at the very end and came really kind of from out of nowhere and felt so weird. There was a lot that was left unanswered and so much was left to be desired with this book. It felt so unfinished. I don't know if part of the reason is because this is part of the Enchanted Files series. So this is the first in the series that Bruce Coville was trying to make us interested in reading the next book to find those answers. But instead of making me want to read the next book, it just made me feel as though this story was incomplete and I am a completely uninterested in reading the next book because it makes me feel like the next story will also be just, I don't want to say half-assed because I respect Bruce Coville too much, but it, there was so so much potential here. Let's just say that. This book had a lot of potential. 
All right, the next book that I read was The Prisoner by B.A. Harris, and I gave this book two stars. This follows our main character, Amelia, who is being kidnapped from her bed with her billionaire husband, and now they are locked up in separate rooms, being held for ransom, except there is kind of more going on there. There are layers to this kidnapping. Amelia and her husband do not like each other at all, so there are layers to that. There are a lot of questions that are needing to be answered, and while this would sound very interesting and like you can't put it down because you have all of these questions that need answers. It's kind of the opposite. So much of this book is spent just locked in a room, which is very boring. Amelia is a character who confuses me because she's important, but she's not important, but she is. There was so much to this book that was just unbelievable for me or something would happen and I would be like, mm -hmm, no, that I just kind of wasn't really enjoying it and I, I just was not vibing with it. This is not the book for me. If it was for you, I'm glad for it, but for me, I just wasn't feeling it. Next up we have A Reliable Wife by Robert Gulrick, and I also gave this book two stars. This is about Catherine and Ralph, where Ralph puts a advertisement in the paper for a reliable wife who is answered by Catherine who tells him that she was a missionary traveling around with her father but in reality she is somebody who is here trying to poison him so that she can steal all of his money and become a rich widow. This book was so slow and it was tough for me to care about many aspects of the plot because the characters themselves did not care about many aspects of the plot. Very significant things would be revealed about other people and characters would not care. And if other characters do not care whether their life is potentially in danger, how should I care about whether their life is potentially in danger? Not just that, but the morals of Catherine were very confusing, flip-flopped back and forth all over the place. In the end, I was really just skimming through this book and just trying to like get it over with because I was just so done with everybody in general. The next book that I read was Not So Perfect Strangers by L.S. Stratton, and I gave this book four and a half stars. This is about Tasha who ends up picking up a woman named Maddie one day at a hotel, kind of just giving her a ride, and they become kind of low-key, not really friends, but they start talking and creating a strangers on a train type plan, which means they kind of are talking about killing the other person's significant other because they don't really they know each other in such an unlikely circumstance that it seems that they can try and make it seem like the murders were random as opposed to planned. So Tasha ends up getting sucked into this kind of murder plot that she does slash doesn't want to participate in because her husband is very abusive so she's trying to figure her way out of it and it seems like murder might be the only way. But there were so many twists and turns in this. There were times in which I thought that I had stuff figured out but I did not. And I just really enjoyed it to the point that I am going to be looking more into uh, L.S. Stratton's other things that she has done to see what types of stuff might also be good that she has already published. The next book that I read was The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan, and I gave this book four stars. This book is about Frida Lou, whose daughter ends up getting taken away after she leaves her home alone uh, for the afternoon, and her daughter is only like 18 months old, and so Frida is end up sent to a school for good mothers. It's supposed to be a school that is supposed to kind of like rehabilitate mothers and teach them how to properly take care of their children before the state feels comfortable giving the children back to these mothers. This was a very thought-provoking read. 
If you are somebody who is interested in reading this book, I would definitely say to buddy read it or read it in a book club or something like that because this is a book that you are going to want to talk to other people about. There were a lot of concepts going on that I was like, oh my goodness, that's interesting. I desperately needed to know other people's thoughts and opinions. The school introduces AI robots that the mothers are practicing their mothering techniques on, and there are a lot of controversial things going on because they're robots. They're kind of like paused and put on hold and like put into like suspended animation but like Frida says that she can still see that the kids are like alive in there they just can't move which is freaky in and of themselves and then they do things like oh how are you going to soothe your child when your child is crying well let's make your child so we can practice that so they'll like hit the children or they'll take things away from the children in order to get them to cry so that the mothers can practice soothing them but obviously seeing as this is AI and they're supposed to be replicated like real children they're gonna incur trauma like real children so like <laughs> I honestly would love to see a story that's from the POV of one of the children robots from this book because I that just seems so interesting to me especially a lot of the different behaviors that the author brought up the AI robots were doing was questionable and interesting so I just would love to see more about that. But yeah, I gave this book four stars. There were things about it that confused me, things about it that questioned me, but that's kind of what this book was supposed to do. It's, spo it's supposed to be a book that makes you ask a lot of questions and be like, is that the way that we should be doing things? Or should we be doing it this way? I don't know. I don't have any children, but I do have degrees in children. And the last book that I read was The Ivory Key by Akshaya Rahman, and I gave this book three and a half stars. I'm checking my story graph. I lied, I only gave this book three stars. This book is about four siblings, one of which is now the ruler of their kingdom, and they have a very interesting magic system in which they kind of mine magic, but now that the main character has kind of got in the kingdom, now they're ruling, they have found that they are running out of magic and they are kind of screwed because of that. And so the four siblings need to work together to try and like find this ivory key that is hopefully going to bring them to a secret mine that is going to have a lot more mineable, mineable magic to help save their kingdom. I didn't like this book as much as I would have hoped and that was mainly because this was like a quad POV so we got a POV from each of the four siblings and by the end I didn't understand the motivations of three out of four of the siblings which is not good when you're reading a book. <laughs> I should know why things are, why people are there and why things are happening and fully comprehend what is going on. I do have to say I really really like the magic system though. I think having mineable magic and, and magic that you have to like refine kind of like steel and other types of ore is extremely interesting and a very unique type of magic. But because they ran out of magic there was very little magic happening in this book so I didn't even really get to see how the magic worked when it was used so I don't know I another book that had a lot of potential but unfortunately didn't live up to my personal expectations which everybody knows is that's all that matters is Spencer's expectations <laughs> All right, so those were all of the books that I read in the month of May. Have you read any of these books? Let me know down below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. But besides that, make sure to stay safe and have a fantastic day. Bye.